So Internet Plus is a name I invented for Internet of Things plus the data, plus the connections, plus everything. I don't know, it's a mediocre term, but there really isn't a term for everything. And what I'm writing about in the book is the totality of everything. And why is it so insecure is a book in itself. The short answer is the market doesn't reward good security, so we get lousy security. And the government doesn't regulate good security, so there's absolutely no incentives anywhere to have good security. So we don't. And you also touched on the fact that complexity is the enemy of security, and we've got that as well, right? Oh, a lot of things. I mean, you know, getting into the noise, there are a gazillion technical reasons. Certainly, complexity is one of the difficult things. But honestly, if there was profit in making it secure, there would be. What about patching as a failed security paradigm? What, what are your thoughts on that? You know, patching is kind of reaching the end of its useful life. It works really because the things we're patching are expensive and maintained by tech companies. Right? They're laptops, they're computers, they're phones. And that whole patching ecosystem is predicated on there being engineers at Apple and Microsoft and Google who can write these patches and push them down. You start moving to low-cost embedded systems like DVRs and home routers and appliances, and there are no engineers to write patches. There's no mechanism to get the patches to the systems. So that, that's going to fail pretty badly. Okay, great. Uh, you mentioned class breaks, and this is one of the reasons that problems with security getting broken. I mean, I mean class breaks something we're used to in computers, right? That a vulnerability appears and suddenly every iPhone is insecure. All windows are insecure. And then we have to, to get a patch. The real, real world isn't ready for that. Right? If you think about physical devices like cars, cars fail you know, in this irregular stochastic pattern. They break once in a while and there are repair shops to deal with a steady stream of cars that need fixing. They don't break all at once. And the mechanism of all at once is, is going to be difficult for the real world to contend with because they don't have that capability. Everybody's refrigerator needs fixing today. We can't do that. Um, I was at a press briefing with the head of the FBI and NSA cyber. They were talking about 5G and they're very concerned about the security of it. Do you buy the security concerns about that? I mean, 5G is a, a big deal and security is a problem. I kind of laugh at the NSA and FBI being concerned about it because they're the ones who are pushing to make sure it's insecure. Right? They have this weird definition of security, which means security from everyone except them, which we as technologists can't actually build. And they are pushing for insecure protocols. At the same time, they're complaining about lack of security. So yes, we need security, we need trust. And that actually means the FBI and NSA are not going to be able to eavesdrop on those systems. And they have to either accept that or be happy with the insecurity. They can't get both. And you hit on that, you, you kind of called it the golden age of surveillance, yet they're claiming they're about to be shut out by encryption. Where do you fall down on this debate? Uh, that encryption is vital for national security. That as long as our phones and computers are used and carried by our legislators, our CEOs, our nuclear power plant operators, that putting back doors in them is not just stupid, it's dangerous. And yes, I get it that the FBI will have to do a little more work to solve crimes, but the security benefit is more than worth it. Okay, we've talked about a lot of the problems. I want to hit what you kind of covered in the end of your book about some of the solutions. Where do we need shifts and and now. You know, really what we need is government to step in. We are now living in the world that the market gives us in terms of security. Right? This is it. This is what the market will reward. If we don't like it, we need to do what government always does is, you know, perturb the market, right? To, to change the playing field. And we'll do things like that all the time. We have child labor laws, we have minimum wage laws. These are all perturbings of the market. And we need to do that here in cybersecurity, just like we do in airline safety and everything else, and say, here are some minimal standards, here are some regulations, here are some mechanisms for liability. You know, we know how this works in every other aspect of society. We need to do it here. And the, as long as we don't, we're going to be stuck where we are now, which is with all this insecurity.
are you optimistic about cybersecurity and the future of it? Or? So I tend to be short-term pessimistic, long-term optimistic. I actually don't think this will be the end of society. We'll figure this out. I think we have some rocky years ahead. So you're at a number of conferences where people come together to right. talk about this problem and share ideas. Why are you a part of that ecosystem? What's the benefit, do you think? King, I mean, we're human beings. That is what we do. That is how we solve problems. Right? I mean, you know, we're not alligators. We don't live solitary lives. We live communal lives. And we develop language to do this. Right? So for us as a species to get anything done, we need to collaborate with each other.